What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the seventh edition of the Feli Sports Podcast. Here with your boy, Coach Mario, and my partner in crime, the Don, and a special uh, guest today. We always let everybody introduce themselves. What's up, Don? What's going on today? What's good, you guys? How y'all doing this um, Monday evening? Uh, live from Georgia. Um, y'all, you know, uh, this is our se- seventh episode. Today, we're going to talk about some Braves baseball. Uh, spring, spring training is at full force, so, you know, um, a lot of people who are not, I guess, Braves fans, they're like either Falcons fans who listen to us or whatever, you know, hey, this would be a good um, show for you to listen to, to know what's going on, you know, with your hometown um, sport, um, baseball team. So come check this um, video out for us, you know, please like, Share, comment, and please subscribe to our channel. You know, and all as always, you know, come holler at your uh, hometown sports oh, podcast. Right. Exactly. Who we got with us today, Don? Don? I'm gonna let him introduce himself. <laughs> hey, what's um, up, y'all? A- what's up? I'm JT I'm from the Nakahoma Nation podcast. Here, to talk a little Braves, all Atlanta sports, man. I can talk. I'll talk some legends. I've been watching them. I can talk Hawks. I do it. I'll do it all. Hey, that's what we like on this show. Uh, before we get started, before we get started, always before and the end, let them know where they can um, check your stuff out and uh, find you at JT. Yeah, you can let's do us the Nakahoma Nation podcast show. You can find me on Twitter, Joe Deco like Soda. Uh, I'm all over the place. You probably uh, you probably see my obnoxious tweets out there. So you know, if you don't have me, if you don't have me blocked already, you can find me. On that. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll start you guys uh, rundown with our week in Atlanta sports. We will start with our Hawks. Um, last Monday, the Hawks we took on Miami. We dropped it uh, one thirteen to fourteen. Um, on Wednesday, we had San Antonio. Uh, we were on the short end of the stick of that one as well, one eleven to one o four. Um, on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, the same similar thing happened with the Nets, 114-112. Um, John Collins was out a little bit last week with some illness uh, that attributed to some of those losses. But we did bounce back um, against New Orleans once uh, John came back with uh, – had a 30-20 and 20 night last night, was it? And uh, we were able to take care of the Pelicans, 116-128. to 128. It's always great to be the New Orleans team. I don't care <laughs> if it's football – um, like basketball, whatever Tiffany sport wings. they have, even if it's tennis, <laughs> golf, whatever it is, I don't care if it's chess. It's always good to beat some some team or somebody from New Orleans, right? right. Hey, and this 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 Hawks team, man, it is fun to watch. The they may not show it in the win loss column this yes. year, but that's okay. Like you watch this team and you see, man, the future is bright. There's exciting pieces. If you're not watching this team, I don't know what you're doing. Like get on board. Trey Young is the most exciting basketball player in the league right now. I, I don't care. <laughs> you can give me LeBron. You can talk about Russell Westbrook. The most exciting player plays in Atlanta right now. And it's been a while since you can say that. It's fun. And John Collins is just about averaging a double-double. Yeah. John <laughs> so, Collins is a know. monster. Yes. And, uh, and so we keep these pieces together. The future is really, really bright in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, what did those Falcons do last week, Don? Yes. Well, really, it was a quiet <laughs> week for us, and it's gonna be a quiet week this week. Just to let you guys know that's not a that's not a um, prediction. That's a spoiler because once up, once and all, we don't have that much money. If anything, we're gonna probably, you know, target a guard. Um, I guess in free agency, but you know, free agency starts with Wednesday. But every pretty much teams have already been signing <laughs> signing players though, so it's really yeah. starting today. You can start negotiating. You just can't put ink to the paper to the fifteenth or something like that. Exactly. Um. So, um, a lot of Falcons fans, I got news for you guys. You know, this free agency just keep your expectations um low because we only have what six point seven million to work with in the cap. Um, like I tell people, you know, we've been talking about this for a while now. If you want to be successful for a long time in the NFL, you have to build through the draft. You can't just sign every high-quality free agent that's going to pretty much, one, eat up your cow, and on top of that, you don't know if this player is going to fit in your system. So, um, like I said before, you know, don't get your expectations up and don't get your hopes up too high. 
if anything, if we can walk away with a, a, a nice guard, I would particularly say a left guard because we're not going to have the victory this year. And we still got Fusco on the contract. We, he may be gone, though. If it, it all depends on if we draft a guard in the second round. But that's another – I guess that's another story for another day because I don't want to talk too much about the foul. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> just if we can get a guard – I, I say we win. We win free agency. So that's enough mm-hmm. for the Braves. I mean, that's enough for the Falcons news. Well, we can keep it on the football tip and talk about the legends on fire right now. <laughs> I dare to say, um, Aaron Murray uh, with the jolt of en- uh, energy, two and zero. We defeated Memphis yesterday. We were uh, able to eke out the victory, twenty three to twenty. Um, uh, got a home victory in front of. The vast crowd, <laughs> uh, but like I said, the legends yesterday got it taken care of, twenty three twenty. So, how did Denar Robinson play that yesterday? I didn't get this because I was watching the United game while you watched the Legends game. So. I mean, um, every week Denar Robinson is more more of a gadget guy. They try to get him some passes outside and let him work. Uh, I mean, you know, okay, he hasn't he hasn't. You know, hasn't done anything yet. Interesting you ask about Denard Robinson, who's not even one of the starting receivers on the team of all the guys for you to ask about. That's who you ask about. Anyway. You know I got to ask about my boy. You know I got to ask about uh, Shoelace. He's a Michigan Shoelace, fan, JT, if, if that's what that comes okay, from. Okay. He's a Michigan fan, so, you know. That's all right. Hey, I'm a Georgia guy. So, so Me too. What, the legends are 2-0 and o as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. They're 2-0. Yeah. and o. App State um, never beat UGA. Just saying. <laughs> That's true. That's Just true. saying. <laughs> okay, look, 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 look. Just saying. I mean, okay. You know. So when the last time Georgia won that championship? Uh, we don't need to talk. We don't need to talk. When the last time Michigan won? Ninety-seven. <laughs> Thank you. Bro, I mean, come they on. split. That was shared. That was shared, wasn't it? Anyway, it don't matter. Anyway. It's a piece. It's a piece. It's, it's, it's better than nothing. All right. What's okay. going on with United, Don? All right. Well, United, um, just a horrible week for us, um, you know, on the pitch. Um, the CONCACAF Championship League um, leg one quarterfinal was played in Mexico uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, Monterey, we lost against three to nothing. And we came home and we played yesterday against, you know, um, a expansion team, Cincinnati, and we tied 1-1. And also yesterday, it was, you know, it was a great day because it was our home opener. And, um, you know, Banner, it was pretty much they lowered the banner for the game. And then we got news that the banner is not permanent. So they're only going to display the banner only on Atlanta United games, which I feel like is the dumbest thing because you, you want to showcase your accolades, you know, 365, you know. Yeah, sure. Like, I remember in the Georgia Dome, remember they had all those banners from the division titles and the, um, I guess the um, NFC championships we won, and also like numbers that were tired, even though they moved, I know they moved them outside of the stadium, the new stadium, but you want to show your accolades out, you know, and then sometimes it gets the other team, like, hint, hint, the Falcons, they give them something to motivate them. Like, oh, the soccer team got a banner up. We don't, so hey, we need to try to, you know, who need to do so we can get a banner raise in the stadium, right? Right, and I guess we'll uh not so smoothly segue into <laughs> our main topic for today, <laughs> and that is our Atlanta Braves. Um, spring training, um, Tuesday, uh, we took on the Yankees, uh, we were went, uh, I'm sorry, we lost to the Yankees five to one. Um, we won the game five to one. Was that? But did we win that game? Maybe I'm looking at the notes incorrectly. But we played the Yankees and and the score was five to one. <laughs> yeah, we won. I guess I believe we won against the Yankees. And then we lost to Miami for uh four to zip on uh, Wednesday. Uh, and uh, I believe that was split split squad because we had uh Detroit as well. And we dropped that one two to eight. So Wednesday we had split uh, split squad going. Um, for you, those of y'all don't know what that is, basically they split half the roster plays this team, half the roster plays that team. Uh, Pretty much like a double header. Yeah, and uh, 
Philly, um, we were winners of that five to four. Um, Saturday, we took on the Tigers, Detroit, and we won that four to six. And yesterday, we had Miami. Um, we lost that one to the Marlins five to two. And uh, earlier today, we just uh, had Pittsburgh this afternoon, and we won that one two to six. Um, Braves last year, big, uh, well, I'm sorry, were a surprise to me winning 90 games. Um, not just saying that because they're the hometown 10 for the, you know, for people who are not base, big baseball people. 100 wins is an awesome season. 90 wins, a very good season. The Braves had a young roster last year. I was expecting 70 wins. Uh, they were a big surprise to me. Not just saying it, like I said, because they're my hometown team. I believe we have the best young players in the game. Um, our farm system is looking bright like it's been looking the past 30 years, actually. That's one thing the Braves get get correct. But uh, just the outlook on the season, um, you know, uh, I'm excited. And I put on Twitter today, uh, who thinks we can get to 90 again? But, it's going to take <laughs> some work to get to 90 again. I mean, it's going to take some work because the rest of the division got a lot better. They did. I mean, look what Philly did with Rio Muto. Of course, everybody heard about Bryce Harper last week. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about Bryce Harper all off season. He finally signed. The Mets got better. They got Robinson Cano, Edwin Diaz to be their closer. Um, Nationals are always good. You knew they were going to be good coming into the year, even though they lost Bryce Harper. They added Patrick Corbin. They got a great rotation. So it's going to be tough because uh, a lot of the division outside of Atlanta played down last year. You know, Nationals never got on track. Phillies hung around for a while, but just couldn't hang near the end. Uh, but, hey, this Atlanta team showed up a little early last year. No one thought they were quite there yet. Uh, of course, going into last year, we weren't expecting Ronald Acuna to be what he was, you know. And uh, so the pitching stays healthy for Atlanta, and Acuna continues to develop. Ozzy Albies, Dansby Swanson gives you something out of the shortstop. He's got a great defense if he can hit the ball a little bit. I think Josh Donaldson is going to be a great player at third base. He just won the MVP just a couple of years ago. People have forgotten about that. Freddie Freeman is going to be Freddie Freeman. It's going to be a really good team. It's going to be a really, really good team. They might be a better team, but not win the division because everybody else got better. They may have improved from last year, but we may not have the banner to show for it. I think it's going to be tougher to get this year. Uh, my, my concern with the team is, is the bullpen, and it's been my concern for the past few years, okay? We got yes, we we hit we stroked lightning, um, like the sec after All Star break, we really did, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, down the stretch, we played well. When we got in the playoffs, and you know, a lot of people, you know, criticized me for being negative. And I, I don't, I don't try to be negative, but I just state the facts. That's it. Sometimes you just go, <laughs> you like the facts, or you're not gonna like it. Right, but right. I, but I'm not gonna sit up here and I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm a very blunt person when it comes down to sports. Well, it's certainly about being an Atlanta sports fan. We end up being a little negative because we're Atlanta sports fans. That happens. <laughs> <You exactly. know? laughs> and my, my concern was, and I, and I told people, I said, we're not going to go far in the playoffs because we do not have a bullpen. Right. Well, this year, I think um, the bullpen is okay, pretty, pretty good. There's a certain uh, free agent closer sitting out there that if he came back to Atlanta would really solidify the bullpen completely. Um, he's going to be pitching somewhere pretty soon. Is it Atlanta? I got no idea. I've heard I've heard he wants to be back in Atlanta, but you know they got to figure out all that contract that he wants like five years, and he's not going to get it because yeah. you know he's not going to get it after you're, after you're thirty years old. That's just you got to prove it. Yeah, he um, tripping. He tripping on that. I'm sending my stuff. Look, look, take two year, take a two year deal. Yeah, you know, and, and call call it a career because you're not, you know, you're not going to. Um, <laughs> You're not going to try to finesse us. Like well, we, the group of the, the the group of guys that size that have thrown that hard that late into the career is really small. You got like Pedro Martinez and Billy Wagner, and that's about it. It's very hard for a guy who's about my size, <laughs> and I'm about 5'10", 200, throwing 98, 99 miles an hour. As you get older, I mean, if you're six foot four, two forty, it's a different ball game. But yeah. the wear and tear on your body, I mean, that just Pitching is really destructive to your elbow, to your shoulder. And the question with a guy like Craig Kimbrell is, do you go for that long because there's no guarantee he can hold up? And in baseball, your contracts are guaranteed. You're going to be paying him regardless. 
And you don't want to pay a broken down 34 year old reliever $20 million a year, you know, but, but he's a guy that would really solidify it. But I like the guys we have. I mean, uh, Darren O'Day is a guy who who we traded for last year. He was hurt, couldn't pitch. He's going to be a lefty setup guy. AJ Mender uh, takes the next step and develops. Vizcaino gives me headaches when he comes in because he, he, he's uh he never seems to make it easy. I love that guy though. He he's he's good, man. He's got stuff. He's got some stuff that really jumps out at you. Like when you know when when the ball leaves his hands, you don't have to be a baseball guy to know like oh not everybody can do that. You know, yeah. um, but uh, it's just a matter of health. They got so many young arms. If they can find some places for these guys. As the runners to contribute, you know, you had a guy right pitch today. He's been awesome this spring, but where's he going to go? We've already got four starters pretty much synced into the rotation. So, are all these young arms going to help us in the bullpen, or are they going to just sit there in the minors doing nothing? So, if they can find a spot for these guys, I think the bullpen can kind of settle itself out. And um, mainly, what I want to do is not overuse guys like we did last year. We had guys like Sam Freeman who pitched way too much. And by the end of the year, he just had nothing left, and he was getting shelled left and right. And we've got to do a better job. Snickers got to do a better job managing the bullpen. So when you're getting down to September, October, you've got some guys in there that just aren't dead arms by that point. And uh, that's what got us in a lot of trouble in a lot of games last year. Their bullpen just was not able to, like you said, I mean, that was that was our weak spot. We weren't able to close out games like – the Braves teams of the past who used to get to the seventh inning and it was seventh, eight, ninth, it was over. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit rockier right now. Um, so, so who, and see, the, the frustrating thing for me last year was it seemed that there was not one guy we could depend on. A right. guy, especially mm-hmm. once we get to, when we're talking about a setup guys, guys would, you know, be hot for two weeks. Sure. And then mm-hmm. it's like, hey, man, we just played the Phillies two weeks ago. Where was that stuff that you had two <laughs> weeks ago? Right. And it's like, and mm-hmm. I wonder, is it because, uh, you know, I grew up a baseball kid. Is it the fatigue of being in 90 degree mm-hmm. weather? Well, last year, I never figured out, was it the fatigue factor, young players, or was it just the youth, not even the, right. the physical part, just the mental part of youth and knowing how to deal. And uh, what, what's your takes on that? What do you think? I think it's probably a little bit of both. I mean, there's a mm-hmm. physical toll that you've got to build up stamina. Uh, yeah. You guys like Shane Carl and Dan Winkler, guys that were rookies, they've never pitched uh, this much of a workload before. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a physical toll it takes on you that, you know, through training and working out, I mean, you can build up stamina. And that, you just got to learn how to do that. And then you're right in that uh, as a young guy, look, you can come in and get guys out. Problem is the second, third, fourth time you've seen that guy, you've seen that team, you got to find new ways to get them out. Yeah. Because baseball is all about information. And guys know, hey, uh, this is what this guy likes to do. And when they start to figure you out, they start to know what to look for. Uh, it's an adjustment period. You can come in and be this rookie and this hot shot is getting everybody out. But there's going to be a book written on you and what you like to do. And hitters are going to smarten up to that. And uh, so you have to adjust. Uh, and it's the same. The same with, you see guys like Ozzy Albies and Acuna at times had some moments where he struggled because it's the same as a hitter. Um, they're going to find what you can't hit, and now it's on you to figure that out. And uh, so as these young guys make adjustments and just learn how to be big leaguers, I think that's going to come a long way. It's tough to trust rookies to be lights out every time. You know, I mean, that's, they're still learning what to do. and. Um, so that's, that's just part of having a young team, and as these guys grow, hopefully they develop and get a little better with that. You you see takes all the time where people will say, "I don't see how baseball players get hurt," and that lets you know how a person who never played baseball. <laughs> Let me explain <laughs> right. to people who have never played. Major, you know, baseball play. You play during the summer. You try standing out in center field. For uh, 162 games, if you're an everyday starter, you're going to be out there. Yeah. If you're an everyday starter, you're going to probably be out there. If you're healthy the whole season, 148, 150 mm-hmm. times. Right. And you stand out there in those hours in that heat and sun, seeing if it don't take a toll on you. And you wonder how baseball players get hurt. It's it's a grind. And, yes, and, let, me, and let me add to this: for people who have never been to, for people who have never been to SunTrust Park, it's different from Turner Field. 
it's like it's like the sun is like <laughs> me, I'm telling you, it's like the sun is like drawing into the dog on stadium. <laughs> like if you're not sitting, if you're not sitting in the upper level of the stadium, you're gonna be baked. Like I took my yeah. son last year to the game, and I kid you not, like almost every like every other inning, like in the middle of every other inning, we had to like go and get drinks. Like yeah. it, and then on top of that, it's not SunTrust is not Mercedes Benz Stadium, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You're not getting free refills. <laughs> they do not. They do not allow no. free refills. So you and we had the souvenir cups, by the way. We had souvenir yeah. cups. Yeah, yeah. And, you got to bring some money for concessions, no doubt. Thank you. And we you know, I thought it was crazy when, when McCann, when Brian McCann signed back. I thought, man, mm-hmm. you know, you can go to the American League and be a DH. You gotta love Atlanta to be thirty-five years old when to come down and put on catcher's gear in the middle of July. Like that's 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 not easy work. And you're right, baseball is different from basketball. It's different from football, but it's the grind and it's the day in day out of little nagging injuries that add up over time. Uh, you know, these guys would love to have six days off during the week, like a football player does. Yeah, the, yeah, the workload is is different. Injuries are different, um, and it's not the high impact sport like like you know, like football is, but man, it, it is tough. It's, I look at what they do. There's no, I, I pull a muscle every other day. No, I mean, yeah. my, my hamstrings will be on ice constantly. There's, there's no way I can do it. You know, what, what maybe people don't understand is uh, Braves play at 7 PM. If the Braves play at 7 PM, typically the players have to be there with it too. Yeah. And when they get there too, they usually work out for a couple hours and then have an hour and a half downtime before. But you know, when they come at two, they're just just not laying around all day. They get they they you know they're working. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot out there. You know. Yeah. Uh, especially like he's like JT was saying, a pitcher. Man, it takes toll on your body, and we all know heat and fatigue makes muscle tissue break down, and you're gonna get yeah. injured. Hey, let me yeah. tell you, these, these guys now, especially some of these guys they have on this Braves team, this is not your baseball player of the past. You know, this isn't your Babe Ruth, like, drink beer, eat hot dogs, and just show up for the game all hungover. Uh, Ronald Acuna is a baseball player, but if he had picked up a basketball at 10 years old, he'd be in the NBA right now. Exactly. If he had picked up a soccer ball, he'd be playing in the MLS or somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, he's, yeah. he's an overall athlete that happens to play baseball. And – uh the athleticism on this team is just extraordinary. I mean, when you watch these guys from Dansby Swanson to Ozzy Albies, uh, uh, Johan Camargo, I mean, watch these guys run. I mean, this is one of the most athletic overall teams in baseball. Really exciting to watch. And I know people, there are people that say, oh, baseball is boring. Man, watch this Braves team. They're, they're, they're anything but boring. I'll tell you that. So can Snicker put it all together? That's the question. I don't know. I, I don't know how much impact a manager has in baseball. Um, I don't think it has as much impact as you do in other sports. In the NFL, if you don't have the right head coach, you're not going to win. Uh, in the NBA, I think there's teams where you could – I'll coach Golden State to the playoffs. I mean, <laughs> so I, I, where does baseball fit in with that? I don't know. Because um, there's some decisions that uh, game really can moves. be a coin flip. Right. Yep. And with 162 – games you're going to make some right calls you're going to make some wrong calls um and it, it's way more i think baseball managing is way more of just managing egos keeping everybody on the same page keeping everybody confident don't let guys get too down when they go over 16 and just kind of do what bobby cox did for years you know everybody talked about how bobby cox was just so even keeled they could win five in a row lose five in a row he was the exact same guy because that's kind of what you need day in and day out you know um Baseball's a little different. Could Snicker get us there? Yeah, sure. But Snicker's going to get us there because we got really good players. Yeah. We're not going to get to the playoffs because Brian Snicker is just better than everybody else. We're going to get to the playoffs because we've got good players that are athletic, that hustle, and play hard for each other. Uh, and, and they love playing for Brian Snicker. They love the yeah. guy. So how, you can't really quantify that. That doesn't show up in the stat sheet. But all these players to a man will tell you how much they love this guy. And I think that matters a whole lot. You know, if you – we've all played in sports or seen our teams when we can tell they've tuned out their coach mm-hmm. and it's over and he's a fold-up shop and he's a dead man walking. And, and and that doesn't – doesn't matter how talented you are, when you lose a team, it's over. Uh, this team is bought in. I, I don't think Snicker is that great of a manager, but if the team loves him, if the team plays hard for him, 
He's all right with me then. Yeah, some people compare him to uh, to um, Bobby Cox. I I want that's a reach to me. Yes, I know Snicker Snicker had been in the um, been in the I guess organization for over thirty years, but I don't know. Like I think he's here because he he knows because he's been in the way. He was in the farm league for a while. Oh yeah, he knows his player forever. development. Yeah, he knows his player development. Um, like I said, as far as you know. Dynasty and you know like what what Bobby Cox brought us brought to the table in the nineties. I don't know if he had that in him. I, yeah. I just don't know. Well, I, you know, Bobby Cox had three Hall of Fame pitchers too. I was help. about to say that. You know that would really help. <laughs> so. uh, I think the biggest thing is Bobby did a good job of keeping the players loose. They had fun, um, and that's important because um, I, the Nationals are a good example. Last year, that's a talented team that just didn't enjoy showing up to work with each other. And uh, it just never took off. And uh, I think as long as you keep a, you got to have a good environment, a good clubhouse, um, keep the guys having fun, especially with a young team like this. Hey, because if if these guys go out and play to the best of their ability, we're gonna be just fine. We got so much talent on this team; they're just young. And as long as they 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 stay loose and let their athleticism show up, I think we're gonna be just fine. Okay. So we, we got to go back. Um, what new like? Can you let everybody know what new acquisitions we got um, this off season? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this guy named Brian McCann. You guys might remember <laughs> coming back to catch. At this point, you're not getting much left out of Brian. But what you do get is a guy who can work with the young pitching staff, a guy who can uh, help mentor them. Uh, I think he's got a little bit left behind the plate. I think he can ha- got a little bit left in his bat. He's been injured last year. Uh, but a veteran presence, a clubhouse guy that's going to – he's been there before, and people are gonna, when he talks, people are going to listen. Um, and Nick Marquez is bringing back. I know a lot of people were upset about that. They thought we should have uh, kind of set our sights a little bit higher. But we got Nick Marquez for $4 million. Uh, he's an all-star last year, gold glover. And as far as a, I guess, a quality free agent acquisition, you can't beat that for $4 million. Yeah. Uh, and he's a career 300 hitter. Uh, so – yeah, I, I think it's because he's not sexy. He doesn't hit 30 home runs. You know, he's not flashy. But hey, you go out there and you hit me 10 to 15 homers and bat 300, I'm fine with that. And uh, Josh Donaldson, the biggest contract, uh, one-year contract ever in baseball, $23 million for Josh Donaldson, a one-year deal. He played for Anthopolis with the Blue Jays, won the MVP in 2015, third baseman. When he's healthy, he is one of the top third basemen in the league. I'm talking 35, 40 homers. Bat 275, 280, 100 RBIs guaranteed. If he's healthy, this is a totally different team. If we bring that in, and that allows us to move Johan Camargo, he can play third, shortstop, second base, outfield, first base even, can spell guys and be that super utility guy to give everybody days off. And that's huge. We all talked about the heat and the wear and tear on your body, getting those extra days off. I don't want guys having to play 162 games. I want Freddie Freeman playing 150 games, 145 games, because I want him fresh coming to the end of the year. And that's going to allow us to do that. Um, of course, everybody's got to stay healthy. But uh, we didn't have a whole lot of room to make all these acquisitions. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of holes to fill. We had a team that pretty much set as far as the position players this year. So um, there may still be some trades coming. As soon as I say this, I know they're going to trade somebody and it's all going to be <laughs> <laughs> all for nothing. But uh, right now, I mean, that's, that's where we're looking. And uh, – I'm real excited about it. I think I think people were selling this Atlanta team a little bit short because it's it's kind of a recency bias. We made all our moves in November, and uh, it's kind of out of people's minds. And everybody's looking at what the Phillies have done since then and everything else. Uh, but Atlanta's had a good off season. Don't anybody tell you any differently? They have, and uh, we're going to be just uh, right in this division race again. Yeah, I'm never. I I really didn't jump on the Bryce Hopper train um, simply because you know we got we got Acuna. I think he's a generational talent, you know. Yeah. And I, I really think we're gonna be fine, you know. I really, like I said, I'm, I'm. We have enough hitters on the team. We just need some pitchers. Like, right, right. That's what we need. We just need some pitchers. A front line starter would be. I mean, that was number one on my wish list. Would be getting the guy. Um, I would. I was hoping we would uh, have gone after Jacob Degrom from the Mets last year. Um, somebody like that, Corey Kluber from Cleveland, a guy you can park at the front of the rotation and just solidify everything else. So Fulte is your number two guy. Uh, then you go Newcomb, Tehran, Gossman, however you want to do it. But having a guy where you can get there every five days, 
um, and and just know that you're going to have a chance to win that day. Um, because when you get to the playoffs and you got to get these short series, um, it's it's hard to go up against those kind of guys, you know, two or three times. You, you got to play Washington, and you got to have uh, Max Scherzer and Strasburg, and and now Corbin and those guys in like three straight days. That's 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 tough. Um, and we don't we don't have a Verland. Maybe maybe Fulte can develop into that, but I think he's a year or two away. He's got the stuff. But if he can develop into that, he's got that Verlander Scherzer type stuff. Uh, but can he take the next steps? Um, you know that that's that's to be to be told. So. If we are contenders after All-Star break, will we be buyers in the pitcher's market, do you believe? Or are you to believe that we're stand pat? I hope so. Um, With the way the wild card is set up now, they've got so many teams now that think they have a chance, so it's crowded. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be the only team buying. But we're going to have some money to spend. Uh, So I I think we have a shot at – We obviously we have the prospects to, to make a trade. We've got mm-hmm. enough. We got more minor league pitchers. We know what to do with. Yeah. Um, we can package those together and go after somebody. But I think they're going to want to go after somebody who's going to sign long term here. Like Corey Kluber at Cleveland is going to be a, a free agent next year. Problem is, Cleveland's probably going to walk away with that division, and they're probably not going to be wanting to sell. But you've got guys like that that could be, you know, with with the right prospect hall, love to bring them in and then sign them to a long term deal. Um, I'm still hoping the Mets fall apart this year and uh, they begin oh, to sell off their part. Jake, I, I've, been, I've been wanting Jacob DeGrom. He grew up a Braves fan. He's from Chipper's hometown down in Florida. And uh, I would love to have him here. That's the guy I've been wanting forever. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll kind of see where it goes. It's tough to project from this point because you don't know what teams are going to be around. You don't know what teams are going to fall apart and be selling off their pieces. So, uh, but yeah, if we're there, then yeah, we should definitely be making moves. For for um, our fans who are new to the Braves, we hate the Mets. Just in case you don't know, we hate the Mets. Yes. Right. We hate the Mets, and we also hate the, um, the Nationals. Yeah. Hate the Nationals, and even more so now the Phillies. Uh, Phillies have taken over number one spot in my heart. Uh, I, got a lot, I got a lot of hate stored up in here, and it's, it's reserved for the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies this year. So, uh, Which is fun because I think we miss that in baseball. You don't get that um, same hate, you know, as a Georgia fan. I don't like looking at the Florida Gators helmets. I get a sick feeling when I see it. Um, <laughs> I know you, you guys, if you guys see the Saints come on through the tunnel, you automatically just have that bad taste in your mouth. We, we, we kind of miss that with baseball. And it'd be nice to get back to having that fun, you know, just, just the distaste and the hate for the other team is, is, is fun. And I think baseball kind of misses out on that. Well, I was always taught to hate um, the Mets. I was, always <laughs> taught, I was always taught to hate the Mets. And, um, you know, really the Nationals, they really just started getting, getting good, what, what, 12 years ago when they moved to Washington? Because they was in um, Montreal all those years as, as the Espos. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was always Mets, Phillies, and then um, Miami. Yeah. It's hard to hate Miami because you kind of feel bad for them. It's like a little, you know, it's like a – it's like the little brother that wants to hang, you know. Hey, they won two. They won two World <laughs> Series. I That's true. One hour, so hey, you know, I, I I kind of you know despise them, but you know they always do you know dumb moves anyway for them to, to they they pretty much in they get themselves in their they don't they they're pretty much in their own way of being right. Good. right. So, yeah. So I've got a question. Is Ronald Acuna the best player under 25 in the MLB? Ooh, wow. He, he's he got a solid argument. I mean, I, I'm biased. I'd say yeah. yes. <laughs> I would say he is. Uh, Juan Soto for the Nationals, really good, mm-hmm. too. Now, this guy hasn't played yet, but Vlad Guerrero Jr., I know I feel old saying Vlad Guerrero Jr., wow. but he's the number one prospect in baseball. He's going to he's gonna kill it. Junior. Um, yeah, wow. I know. You feel old? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. know, right? What team do you play for now? He is with uh, Toronto. He's in the Blue Jays okay. minor leagues. He'll be up by probably May, April, okay. late April or May. And um, the dude, is he, he is thick. I mean, he, is, he does not look like a baseball player. I mean, he is as wide as it gets. He's got a, a big base. A big fat butt, and he gets around the ball. And he he's just like his dad, you know. He gets up there and just grips it and rips it. And uh, I mean, he was hitting like four hundred in the minors last year. The guy, he's just Jeez. he's outstanding. He's go, <laughs> so he's he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a problem. Uh, 
But uh, but yeah, Acuna's Acuna's all around though. Acuna's got mm-hmm. everything. You know, he's a natural athlete. He can run. He can hit. He can hit for power. Um, he's got a great arm. Uh, he's a can't miss prospect. You know, he's just one of those guys where he, the only thing stopping him would be injuries. You know, he's he's kind of like uh, Ken Griffey. He's natural, a natural swing. It's just gorgeous, um, effortless, and and everything seems to come real easy to him. Reminds me a lot of Griffey, a lot of Andrew Jones in that. It doesn't seem hard. <laughs> like he's just – baseball is a super hard sport to play, and it just comes so easy to him. The only thing is I just hope he has a long, healthy career because you're looking at a future Hall of Famer, no doubt. Yeah. Andrew Jones, he loved he love Acuna. I, yeah. I see his stories and stuff all the time. Like, he, like he's always hanging out with him and everything. So that's that's why I kind of compare uh, Acuna to is Andrew Jones. I remember – and uh, I don't – well, how old are you again, JT? I'm 33. Okay, yeah, so you are you a couple of years older than me, so I'm the young. Yeah, when, young was, uh, when Andrew was 17, he played here in Macon for the Macon Braves. He was 17 years old, and my dad would take me to the park to see him because it was like this is the next Willie Mays. He get up there with no batting gloves. He was a kid, and I mean, he was just two years later, he's hitting homers in the World Series. Exactly. I would like to say that 95, 90, uh, 96 World Series against yeah. the Yankees. Yeah, I remember. I'm a, that. I'm a couple years. You know, I'm a couple years. Uh, Older than you guys, so I remember, you know, um, Andrew Jones. That's all you. That's the, when he was coming up. All you heard about, all you heard about, was yeah. the next Willie Mays, the next Willie Mays, the next Willie Mays. And then I'm watching this guy hit home runs against the Yankees, <laughs> and he's 19 years old, 20 years old. And you're like, man, we yeah, we got yeah. something right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Andrew had so much natural ability, and yeah. kind of fell off a cliff. I don't know if he took care of himself. You know, I don't think he was a big workout guy. You know, yeah. uh, that was the knock on him. And might enjoyed a few too many late nights in the gold club, you know, so I can't blame him, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you, you know, it's Atlanta. And, and, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's the end of his career, kind of, kind of tailed off. But, man, defensively, yeah. it, just a guy that's just graceful out there. And just, it was almost like he wasn't being challenged, you know, it, it was just so easy to him. Uh, you, you see some guys like Chipper Jones, who you can just tell is a hard worker. And then you look at Andrew, and it just seems like, you know, he's just out there, just every fly ball, it's just no problem. You know, it just has that natural ability. And, and Acuna's the same way. He's just He just carries himself so well. Like, it's not even a – nothing bothers him. Nothing, You know, he strikes out. You don't see him get mad. He just he, – he's chewing gum, goes right back to the dugout and comes right back up. Nothing affects him, you know. And uh, and that's what you worry about with the young guys is, hey, if you go 0 for 4, are you going to push the next night? Are you going to struggle? Are you going to try too hard? Before you know it, now you're 0 for 8, you know, and you get in these slumps. you got to have a short memory. And uh, he does, and and he just it, – it, it's just – it's going to be exciting to watch him develop, and I think you got a perennial all-star, future Hall of Famer here in Atlanta. That's why I'm kind of concerned about Dansby. You know, he get in that slump. It's hard for him to get out of that slump. Yeah, yeah. Dansby, Dansby is a great defensive player. The bat just is not coming around, which, which – I, I mean, I think I think part of Dansby's problem is well, you can't, can't fault him for this, but he was a number one pick in the draft, you know. And when you when you get drafted number one, your expectations are a little higher than a guy batting two sixty playing great defense, you know? Yeah. Which is fine. You know, you're batting two sixty, your gold glove shortstop, that's great. Teams need that. But when you come with that number one overall draft pick, you are expecting Derek Jeter. Yeah. You're expecting A Rod, you know, at least a Nomar Garcia Parra type, three hundred perennial all star. And he's still young. So, you know, let's let's give him a chance. I mean, he, this is only his second full season. So um, I think, you know, he's only what twenty four, probably. So he he's still got some time to grow. Yeah, I got another question. So the young explosion on this team, who's next? Who's that guy that we're going to see come up in <laughs> July, August during the dog days of summer when it gets bogged down? Who's that guy that's going to come up that we're going to say, man, that, who's that guy that got that double today? Who's the guy that stole that base? Who's that guy that's going to give us that spark in July and August, that, that name you, that we don't know right now? I tell you, the guy who's going to be pushing for time is Christian Pache. Remember the name <laughs> Christian Pache. Uh, we may have to find a spot for him. We'll have um, to. <laughs> so in, in during CR day, I don't know if you might be the odd man out, but he's gonna he may force Atlanta he's getting on at the some field. point yeah. where they're gonna have to say, all right, we gotta we gotta do something. He's gotta play. Get up. Yeah, he's, he's gotta, gotta play. Yeah. 
because um, you can't waste him going two for four every night uh, over in Gwinnett. Right, <laughs> you know, right. And, and, and it's kind of what Acuna last year. You know, he had this yeah. this this meteoric rise through the minors where they just couldn't hold him back. And they used yeah. to, he'd get each level they challenged him, he blow he passed the test. And uh, and and Pache is a guy that um, we had a guy on the show who compared him. And he said, "Look, uh, this is he's." He's he, he's going to produce at that level, um, so we just got to find a place for him. But that's the guy that I don't know if he's going to be up this year. But yeah. you know, he's as soon as somebody in the outfield gets hurt with a little hamstring pull, he's the one all the fans be going. All right, when's Pache coming up? <laughs> so he's he's I I think he's going to push there. He, he's going to make them uh, push them up there to the majors. I mean, he's he's just that good. That was a great setup because I served that one up to you, and that's the name I wanted you to say. <laughs> we didn't, we, we didn't practice that, everybody. Yeah, we didn't even practice that. But no, like I said, it's the right answer. I had a feeling you wanted me to go there. Yeah, if you don't know this kid, find out about him. Um, so, uh, Don, you got questions? No, I don't have anything. Um, you know, I'm just waiting for this season to start um, in a few weeks. Just fans out there who listening to our podcast, you know, hey, go on, show you support for the Braves. I know some of y'all, you know, SunTrust Park is like out the way because I remember I grew up like like a half a block from Turner Field. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was nothing going to, you know, going to a Braves game. But when they, you know, as soon as they moved it out there to Cobb County, I remember I had to go last year and like I had to park at the train station, get an Uber. To take me to the stadium, it was a hassle. It is. Right, it, right. I'm not gonna lie, it's a hassle because the parking there is limited. It is. It's very limited. But you know, just go out there and support. You know, support the bomb Braves. Because I'm when I'm when I was there last year, it was like a Sunday afternoon game in the middle of June, and it was burnt. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah. So this time, this season, I'm gonna try to go see some night games. I'm gonna be smart this time. I'm gonna go see some night games. I'm gonna try my best to see a game sometime in April next month. Yeah, get up there while it's still cool. It's still cool in April. And man, I tell you, if you haven't been to Sun Trust, the battery area, I mean, it is so cool. Yes. Uh what they've done with that state. It's an experience now. It's not just about the ball game. My kids go and they don't even want to sit down and watch the game. Like they just want to see everything there is to see. Um, we went up there for Chop Fest in January. They have a big fan fest up there. It's just a real cool area. And it's basically just this big part built around the Braves. Um, yeah, it's a little out of the way now. Um, I, I live in Macon. I got to drive all the way through the city, uh, you know, hoping I don't get stuck in traffic. Well, I have a further drive than you because I, <laughs> I, I, I stay in, like, south, south Georgia. Oh. I'm in Stone oh, Mountain. Oh, it's, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Yeah, I'm in Stone Mountain. But I'm not too far away. It, it's, it, yeah. But it's also it's, it's, it's really cool. And uh, it's, it's amazing because I grew up going to games at Fulton County Stadium and Oh, yeah, you know, there too. wasn't anything to do there. I mean, it me was kind too. of a dump. And uh, now I'm looking at it like, wow, like, you know, this is unreal. My kids are getting to experience this. I'm like, this is, you know, what are their kids going to grow up with? Because this is crazy. Well, look, I love, I love Atlanta Fulton County State, okay? Like, yeah. that, mm-hmm. that right, that, the memories, I grew the up, it, it was just, it, it, it meant a lot. Man, I, yeah. I saw Dale Murphy there. I saw Bob Horner there. I saw <laughs> Dion there in a oh, Falcons yeah. jersey. I saw, I saw, <laughs> man, I saw... Like I said, it's the first. I, I saw the circus there. <laughs> I saw so many there. Like you say, uh, I'm, I'm, people don't I'm even 40. remember the Falcons and the Red Helmets used to play at Fulton County Stadium. Yeah, know? I remember. People, uh, people Jake, don't remember I'm, that. I'm, I'm 41, and my dad okay. is actually from Summer Hill. My dad actually, the house he grew up in was actually knocked down to build the stadium. So, oh wow. Yeah. So you know, it's not. It's not. It's not too much. I don't remember, you know. I mean, my yeah. dad's been taking me to Braves games since before I can remember going to Braves games. Um, I played baseball from about the age of four to college. Right. So, you know, I very much so grew up a baseball kid. So very much. Uh, each each summer we go to t- tons of games. You know, yeah. growing up, my dad we go to tons of games all the time. So, uh, Fulton County Stadium, I. I 
been there. T- I've, I've been to Fulton County Stadium probably more <laughs> times than I've been to any other stadium, actually. Yeah, my kids, when we went to SunTrust, then my yeah. daughter wanted to ride. They have this, like, zip line in the outfield over there. <laughs> and she was like, so my daughter was like, Daddy, did you ride the zip line when you were a kid? I was like, no, we had to sit there and watch the game. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. I had to sit in my seat. <laughs> look, the, the, most, the most fun we had was poking out the little all-star ballot things. Right. As they, oh, yeah, I remember those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had. Yeah, they, you had to back then. You had to poke the things out, and you had to mill them in. Like the yeah, day yeah. you just get them out and just. They used to have a little box to drop them in when you leave in the stadium. When you in front yeah. of the yeah, I, I did that every because I would go around and because you know back then nobody was going to Brady Stadium, so I would go around and collect them. And during the game, I probably punch a hundred of those things. During Stuff the in the ballot box, yeah. Could you get the yeah, Braves in there? Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember we just we didn't call it Atlanta Fort. We, we just called it the stadium because everything was there. You had the five from there, then you had the yeah. breeze there. So we just called it the stadium and the yeah. Omni, <laughs> the stadium and the, the Omni. Oh, the Omni. <laughs> man, I do remember. I do remember going to games at the Omni. Man, that place was different. That was a uh, which I miss. It. it had so much personality there. Um, that that brings back memories. Going to Hawks games at the Omni and of course Fulton County Stadium. Man, that was. That was like, because for me growing up in middle Georgia, going to Atlanta was like going to New York or Vegas, you know, oh, okay. like we're going to Atlanta yeah. this weekend. It Got was you. Like, okay. Oh, this is a big deal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an hour 15 up the road, but that was, as a kid, that was, it wasn't yeah, anything I here, you. you know, that was a, yeah. so that was a big deal getting to go up there. So, you know, if you had a friend that had Hawks tickets that night, you go, you know, it was a, it was an event, you yeah. know, yeah. it was a big deal to us. Yeah. I ain't never seen a Hawks game there at the Omni, but I'm, I remember going to some wrestling events. Oh, and, um, oh yeah, I, WCW I, was at the I, Omni all the time. I yeah. saw uh, Monster Truck Bigfoot in the Omni. I saw Circuit <laughs> in the Omni. <laughs> I saw Bigfoot the Grave Digger. <laughs> <laughs> well, Circus always come in February. My birthday is in February, so I went to the Circus every year. So yeah, yeah. we always did growing up. Yeah, I went to quite a few wrestling shows up there at the Omni too. Quite yeah, a, a lot of a lot of old WCW Sting, Ric Flair. You know all that kind of stuff that would come down here to Macon too, and sometimes we go up, uh, up there and see it. And so you don't you don't get that kind of you know you don't get that same personality. I love Phillips Arena, what do they call it now? State Farm Arena is that what it is mm-hmm. now? We did call of course, it. The Benz is fantastic. The Benz is like <laughs> jaw droppingly gorgeous. Yeah, but it's a uh, it just doesn't have the same personality. You know, it just doesn't have the same. It's, it's too new, I guess. It, well, now and I do like it now being older. You know, uh, mm-hmm. now. The, the venues are entertainment. And I right. guess as a kid, I guess I never thought about going to the game to be entertained. The game was the entertainment as a kid, like <laughs> right. watching the Braves game. Like even like nine, 10 years old, I never wanted to go wander around the stadium. I wanted to go watch the game. Right. right. Like, right. so now, you know, my kids be like, dad, can we go climb the rock wall? Dad, can we go look at the helmet? Dad, can we <laughs> like, man, just yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, just go. See, my nine year old son, see, my nine year old son, he already know the business. He he know we want to see the game. Don't ask me for no zip line. <laughs> no, um, all the time we getting up is go to the bathroom or go get something to eat or drink. I can't, I can't wait for those days because uh, my, my kids are six and three, so they're just like constant motion. That sitting still, just uh, you know, ain't gonna happen for them, you know. But then, uh, I took them to their first Georgia game last year, though, and that well, that worked. They they did like that because it was just constant action, you know. Yeah. Baseball a little bit harder, a little, a little tougher to keep your attention span when you're three years old. But uh, take them to a football game, they they love that. Look, I want to end with this. We see the things now. Like I said, you can climb rocks in the stadium you can do just about anything in the stadium i remember the wildest thing i ever thought i saw was a kid was they had a pool in their baseball stadium <laughs> we have now in stadiums i thought that was wild like what's going in the swimming pool in the baseball stadium they got slide you talking yeah. about diamondbacks yeah. yeah well they had the slide in a what was it tropic or tropicana field that they had the pool was the diamondbacks had the pool yeah the diamondbacks the pool, yeah. Yeah. and i remember when i first saw that as a kid like wow that's like the wildest thing i've ever seen <laughs> and now you can go to the stadium and not even watch the game and have the time of your life <laughs> you can go to hollis games and get your hair cut while you're watching the, the Hawks. That's crazy. You better not do that. You, you better not do that. You better not do that. I'm telling you. If, if, if you get in your, if you in the chair, you get a line in, and John Collins, uh, or Ali for Trey Young to John Collins, oh, your hair is gone. It's gone. Okay. All right, man. Tonight was a really, really fun show. Um, 
JT, plug your stuff again. Let them know where to find you. Uh, yeah, let them know. JT Holton. You can find me at Nakahoma Nation, the podcast. Uh, Jody Coax Soto on your Twitters. Uh, you'll find me on there. You see me. If, you, if you're talking about Atlanta sports, I probably ain't too hard to find. I'm on there somewhere. All right. And um, with that being said, uh, once we get to the dog days, can we have, have you back on to do some more baseball yeah, talk anytime, later on? Any, uh, talk? Hey, man. You know how to reach me anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. You have a good one. All right, man. All right, well, that is our show, you guys. Um, you know, please like, comment, uh, share, and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, you guys. Um, and what else they got to do? And, you know, as always, you know, I'm your hometown. Hometown. the hometown sports podcast. One day we're going to say it together. One yeah, day. We keep working on it, JT. We're going to say it together one day. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta work time. On it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got work to do. <laughs> got to work on it. All right. That being said, y'all, y'all, thank y'all for um, watching um, whoever was in the live stream. Thank you for um, watching us live. If you didn't watch us live, you know, please, you know, like I said, uh, comment. And we normally uh, reply back to all the comments that you guys, um, I guess, send. And with that being said, uh, we are out. Y'all have a great evening.